Welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're going to be placing our sway bar end links and bushings with some new parts from Energy Suspension on our first gen S10 project. The reason for that is I'm planning on keeping the front sway bar on this truck for a while, especially I'm going to, since I'm going to be street driving it and the ones that are on it currently are likely over 30 years old, the originals, and they're falling apart. This should be an easy project and one to check off the list to get this closer to completion. Let's get started. Okay, so here's what I was talking about after 30 years. This is starting to dry rot and fall apart nice and nice. This is bolts probably rust welded on here. I'm sure that'll be a pain to get off. And then over here, this is all nice and wallered out. You can't really see it on camera, but you can see to the other side a little bit of light. You probably can't find that on the camera, but that's the reason we're replacing this. this isn't it really expensive? I plan on driving this on the street a good bit, so I am gonna keep the sway bar for now. So let's go grab some tools and we'll get this piece off and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so we got the end link out finally. And here's what you're left with. Word of advice, use an impact and turn the bolt from the bottom instead of trying to take the nut off the top. The rod will be, come out much easier that way, I'm sure, and then you'll be able to get it out faster than I did. I saved you a good bit of time here. It took me a, at least 15 minutes to get that off there. It was stuck, stuck. But that's what's left out of it. You see I twisted it, and you can see if you look close enough where it's been wallowing around in there too. Just old, worn out, so it's time for replacement. I also went ahead and popped the bushing off too. Which, that was pretty easy to get off. Bolts weren't stuck or buried in there. Shouldn't be any problem. On the other side, I'm going to use an impact. We'll get that side off, and then we'll take a look at these new parts here. All right, so I got this side out too, but don't let me fool you. I actually had to get the sawzall out in this and actually cut some of this off to get this off because I snapped the top off of this, taking it out from the bottom like I suggested. I think these were way too far rusted. But it's out now, both sides. I cleaned up the area a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is grab this sway bar and we're going to put the bushings on and put it up so we can figure out how much modification we need to do to our end links. So I'm going to grab this sway bar and we'll get this bushing on. All right, so there's just an assortment of parts from the factory version. You see it's this little thin rod and these bushings for the sway bar end link are pretty much worn out, falling apart. It's all rusted. And I actually twisted it. I didn't twist itself I, when I was trying to take it off. Um, this is the passenger side one. Bushing's all wallered out too. It's was kind of loose on there after I undid the bolts. So when you order your energy suspension, if you choose to go with this one, I got this from Summit Racing. You don't even have to get yours from there. But everything you see here over is what you get. You get your bushings, your sway bar end links with the polyurethane bushing and the bushings on the end links, some washers, some vague instructions, and some Formula 5 pre-lube for inside the bushings. Now, I did want to mention something that they don't list particularly, but it is important because your sway bar can be a different size. Don't ask me how I know that. This is not the first kit that I had to get uh, because I did not measure that. So make sure you measure your sway bar before you order this so you don't have to go through the process of returning and then waiting and getting the second kit. The reason that is, is because of your bushings here they have several different ones if you filter it out for the S10 on the website. And I ordered the wrong one the first time because I did not measure. So make sure you measure. Let's get this Formula 5 pre-lube in here. Get these end links on. Okay, so we got the bushings on. Got the sway bar hanging back up so we can put the end links on. Um, no problems there. I don't have these bushings tightened all the way as tight as they'll go yet because I want to put the end links on before we tighten those up. But... We've actually ran into our first problem. Now, you'll say it's because I don't have everything tightened down like it should be yet, but the problem with that is the bolt that comes with these kits is not long enough. As you see, even with it just setting there, there's the end of the bolt. So how is this supposed to go on there? There's a solution to this, and we'll show you that here in a second, but this bolt is actually a little hair under seven and a half inches, and that is not long enough for my particular application. So make sure you check yours as well. To fix this, we'll go over here and take a look at how I'm going to fix it. 
Okay, so we had a problem with the end link. In my particular case, everybody's truck may be different, but in my particular case, this is the problem. This bolt is too short. When I measured this bolt, it came out to be just under seven and a half inches long. And as you've seen, it won't let me screw the nut on the top even if I pushed it tight. So my original solution, I thought, was going to be to trim this sleeve by cutting some of this off and allow the bushing that goes on top of here slide down further, thus giving me enough room and thread to get the nut on the top. But when I looked at that, it was going to put the end of the sway bar at a downward angle. And that's not what I'm looking for. I'm trying to keep it close to the factory evenness level. So I went to my local hardware store and they do not have any bolts longer than six inches long and grade eight bolts. I don't even know if this is a grade eight bolt, but it looks like it should be, I hope. So I hopped online and I ended up purchasing this bolt. This bolt is eight inches long and it should give me adequate space here to thread the nut on and get everything tightened up and keep that end of the sway bar level on both sides. So let's get this stuff on here and then we'll thread this new bolt in and see how much of a difference it makes. Okay, so this is the eight inch bolt in the in, as the end link now, should I say, with everything without tightening anything. As you see, we have a lot more thread there and actually we can get the nut on now. So that's upside down, but there you go. Look at that. I'm not sure if maybe this isn't the factory sway bar, but or something buggy was going on here. But the little under seven and a half inch bolt that they provide with this kit did not work. And this one now that it's eight inches will work nicely. So we get everything tightened up. There you go. So we'll get the other side of one. I'll go grab the other eight inch bolt and put that side in and then we'll tighten everything up. Take a look at the end links and the sway bar bushings and we'll get everything wrapped up here. Okay, so everything's tightened up. This is what we got here with this eight inch bolt. As you see now we have significant threads here on the bolt to tighten it up. And if you remember at the beginning of the video, or if you look at your own, if you saw the factory ones, the stud is actually even longer than this bolt here, this eight inch bolt. And I don't know why that is or why they use such a little thin rod, but this is a three eighths bolt, so it's a little bit beefier. Should work out better, I would think, with, especially with these polyurethane bushings versus those rubber ones that'll get smashed and rot over time. So this is what you're looking at here. And then, of course, you got your bushing. It even has like a little greasable part here. We'll grease that up too before we end up taking this on the road. But as you can see the other side, but the other side looks the same. And that's what we have for your energy suspension. Okay, so a quick recap. We ended up changing the sway bar bushings here and also the end links over there. In links, we did end up having to use a half inch longer bolt. The bolt that was provided to us is just a hair under seven and a half inches. I ended up using an eight inch bolt that I purchased online separately. I could not find one at the local hardware store. It seemed like they only went up to six. Move to the other side, same thing. We replaced the end link, used a longer bolt from a separate source than other than what came from the kit. Reuse the 10 millimeter bolts that go into the bushing to hold the sway bar to the frame, and of course the greasable. And that's what comes with your energy suspension kit. Um, if you get the kit, if you choose to go with energy suspension, measure your sway bar, make sure you get the right one. Okay, so that's the installation of our sway bar end links and bushings from energy suspension. Now these come in different colors too. They have black, red, stuff like that. I believe they're grade eight hardware. As you see, we did have to change the end link bolt. However, I ended up using a half inch longer one, actually a little over a half inch longer than what they provided. I used an eight inch bolt as a three eighths bolt, grade eight. And I don't think it'd be any problems with anything else. It seemed like it worked together really well. It's simple as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this was a pretty simple, straightforward install. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I appreciate everyone continuing to follow and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate the support. Hopefully we'll get this on the road sooner than later. That's going to wrap up. Thanks for this time. Check out one of these other videos I'm about to put up, and I'll see you next time.